Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at getting a drum beat set up in Ableton Live 8. So we're going to see how various features of Ableton work, how the drum rack works, how you can work with different samples, and also see a couple of simple production techniques for improving your drum sound. So we're just starting with a blank Ableton set at the moment which you can get to by going to the file menu and going to new live set. And as you can see, we've currently got a few channels sitting here. So we'll just delete the audio channel, as we won't be needing that one for the moment. And we're going to grab hold of one of Ableton's drum racks and just drag it straight into the MIDI channel there. As you can see, it's given us a variety of different pads. Each pad can have one or more samples applied to it which we'll do in a second. You can also scroll through the different pads by clicking the various sections on the right hand side here. You can also access other parts of the drum rack by clicking these little buttons over on the left, much as you can do with the buttons for the mixer and the arrangement view. So we'll just find ourselves some samples That one sounds like a fairly solid kick drum. Find ourselves a snare. One sounds pretty good. And we'll also find ourselves some hi hats. That one sounds pretty good to start off with. So we'll just create a empty MIDI clip, which we can do by double clicking on any one of these empty slots in the channel which then opens up our clip view so that we can see and edit the MIDI clip. To go back to the drum rack you can simply click this other button down the bottom right which takes us back to our rack view and then the button beside that takes us back to our clip view as you can see. So to add some MIDI notes in here, we can either click our draw tool up the top here, or we can use the Control b shortcut, which does the same thing, as you can see. And we'll just put a simple beat in here, just to start us off. You can also highlight multiple MIDI notes, hold down Control, by dragging one of them, you can duplicate the whole selection, which is quite handy. And same for single notes, as you can see with the snare there. So we'll just play that MIDI clip and see what we've got to start off with. As you can see, the samples themselves are getting cut, cut off a little short. So we'll just go back into our drum rack. We'll just click this button down the bottom here, which opens up our simpler device, which is playing our sample for us. And you can click on one of the pads to get to that particular sample. We'll just turn up the release time for each of those. So we're not exactly writing 180 BPM drum and bass right now, so... The faster you go with the tempo, the more you may need to cut off the release just to be able to fit everything into the mix. However, because we're only going with our default 120 BPM tempo at the moment, will allow those samples to ring out a little longer, which will help the whole thing sound a little more natural, as you can hear. So, a fairly simple beat to start off with there. So we might just double the length of that MIDI clip, and we'll throw a bit of variation in there. And just select the whole thing and duplicate that. So we might put some variation in the hi-hats. Let's turn on our draw tool. One of the other handy things for making your drums really stand out is using multiple samples for each instrument. So for example, what we're going to do now is we can just double click on the channel, go back to our drum rack. 
We're actually going to add a second kick drum sample and a second snare sample just to help accent the sounds that we've got to start off with there. So we'll just go back to our samples and ourselves a kick. We want something that's fairly different, has a different feel and character and is also jumping out at slightly different frequencies than the original. This, that way you're going to be feeling more of the frequency spectrum with the sound which as a result makes it stand out more. Actually that one could work quite well so we'll see how we go with that. And we'll just find ourselves a snare. Something fairly roomy to match the new kick. It's got an interesting reverb on it that we could use. Just going back to our MIDI clip. With our draw tool turned on and we'll just add the extra notes in there for the new samples. Let's see how that one sounds. As you can see, the new samples have also got an issue with the release being turned down too low, so we'll just adjust those ones and play that clip again. Now what we're going to do is just mix those samples a little bit, just to get their sound a bit tighter, and we're also going to add some audio effects to them, just to help them stand out a bit more.